Craig Adams here from WeddingFilmSchool.com and today I'm going over all the equipment I use to record audio during weddings. So first up is the Rode VideoMic Pro and you can pick these up at B&H for about $230. Link is in the description below. But um, I use these for all my DSLRs. I throw them on top. I've got two of them. And um, I use these for just general coverage. You know, it's a lot better than the internal mics of any DSLR that you use. And it picks up what you're shooting because it's front directional rather than anything behind. So that's helpful. One thing you want to remember about using the Rode VideoMic Pro is to use the internal preamps rather than the DSLRs because it's a lot better than what you'd be using here. So what that looks like is using on this bottom switch here to turn that to plus 20 and then go into the settings here, take it off auto, put it on manual, and then put it one notch above zero. Um, that'll give you much cleaner and better sounding audio throughout the entire day. And to prove it, check this out. Craig Adams here from WeddingFilmSchool.com. This is Craig Adams of WeddingFilmSchool.com. Next up is the ceremony. And depending on what is going on, if it's indoor, outdoor, if there's a lot of people talking, or if it's just a short ceremony just with the three, the bride and the groom and the officiant, um, the, my main mic that I use is this uh, Tram TR50. It was about $220 at B&H. And this Sennheiser G3 um, wireless transmitter and receiver system, this was about 600 online. And it works wonderful because I can put this right on uh, the officiant because th those are the main words that I want to uh, be picked up. Um, this will just be clipped right here. And um, I've got a link in the description uh, explaining this mic review and uh, how to use these. So check that out. On the other end of that Sennheiser G3, I've got this uh, 3.5 to XLR. And then the XLR goes to an XLR splitter, which um, goes into this Juice Link preamp. And then that goes 3.5 to 3.5 into this Zoom H1. So the idea here is that um, I could directly go from this Sennheiser into like a Zoom H4n, but the preamps in that are terrible. Um, I would much rather use my own preamp, which this was about $400, and then this Zoom H1 was about $100. So this gives me much cleaner sound, um, and it's much easier. And then having this splitter allows me, when I have one channel of sound, um, to s record in left and right, but be able to control separate levels for each of those. So that means if I'm recording my voice, I can set one side much higher than the other, so that if I ever peaked, um, I would have the option of the lower recording level. And really, I could substitute this Zoom H1 for anything, um, but this is just a cheap way to record um, 3.5 uh, audio source. Um, and really, because I'm using the preamp, um, the Juice Link preamp, I set the levels in this as low as possible so that I'm not using the preamp in the H1. Um, and it sounds great that way. You can dial in and adjust the sound and monitor it through this 3.5, and it works great for the ceremony. And if I'm running that G3 to the, the officiant for audio, and it's inside, and, and for some reason they have mics and system sound, I can patch in on the other side. So I get rid of the Y splitter, and I just have the Sennheiser going into this left channel, and then out of this right, I just have an XLR which I can using uh, connectors go to RCA or anything that their mixer board has so I can get clean audio from wirelessly of the officiant and then I can also record line in um, from any mixer they have and all of that goes directly to the Zoom H1. But one of the nicest things about using the Juice Link preamp is that I can put it on the bottom of my DSLR and then just run the 3.5 directly into the camera and there's no need to sync. But that kind of makes sense if there's one audio source and um, because there's multiple cameras and multiple audio sources for the ceremony, I kind of just sync and post, so it's okay. And then also during the ceremony, I have the groom to collect audio for, and then I usually have a podium or um, some kind of musical um, assemblement that I have to record audio for, and that's why I've got these other Zoom H1s. And um, I'll just throw a lav on that doesn't require phantom power, and um, I can just put that on whoever I need to, or I can wind this around the, the mic that uh, they're using for readings and then just set it on the podium. 
I make sure to turn the hold on and then I just roll all day because in Wave I can literally with a one gig card I can record hours so it's fine. So for the reception I usually tap in directly line into the DJ or the band just to get the speeches or anything else that might happen. Um, so I've got a bunch of connectors um, and this will help me bridge whatever connection gap they have um, just to get some kind of audio source coming out of their mixer um, through my juice link uh, preamp and then I can just record with anything um, that I choose to connect that with. Um, but in my bag I've got you know a multi-tap in case um, they don't have any free outlets or anything which is usually a good idea. Um, I've got this uh, quarter to quarter um, I've got just a basic uh, XLR cable, headphones for monitoring. I've got this 3.5 to Y cable to quarter. Um, I've got this 3.5 to 3.5 uh, female um, Y splitter. Uh, so a bunch of Y splitters. I've got 3.5 to 3.5 in case I need that. And then the one thing that I usually find myself using is this longer cable. It's good to have some length, um, so it's a quarter to XLR. So I usually find that I get um, a stereo right and left XLR out of there, line out or master out or tape out, and then I usually run that to uh, a quarter. And I've got this uh, XLR Y splitter. Um, this is also one thing that you should have, and this is an uh, uh, you plug this in to get a negative 10 dB. So there's a difference between um, recording microphone audio and line-in audio. And you're usually going to get line-in audio from a mixer uh, for when they're playing through speakers and whatnot. And it's usually way too hot, too loud for um, when you're recording. A lot of people may have found that and you turn like the Zoom H4n recording level all the way down and it still comes in way too loud. Um, there's, that's when this comes in handy because you plug it in and just right through whatever line you're recording to and it'll lower the audio and turn it more into a mic output. And that was like $20. I've got AC power for my Zoom if I'm recording to that. And then I've just got a couple little adapters, XLR, RCA, all, all my little connectors. Uh, sometimes I find that I can't get a good sound from them or there's just no other options. Um, I will actually mic this speaker that um, audio is coming from. And sometimes I'll just do that anyway, even if I'm lined in, just to get a, uh, uh, a more natural sound because I'll get what the speaker is um, outputting but then I'll also get crowd sounds so it's good to have that just running throughout the entire reception and for that I've got this Shure mic this is about a hundred dollars is one of the best mics people have told me about everyone raves about this Shure I forget the number link is in the description though so I'll just plug this in with XLR directly into my juice link um, just so I can use that preamp um, and then I'll just put this on a mic stand right up to the speaker and uh, obviously I'll have to turn the levels down a bit but um, it sounds great but that's about it you know it's about being creative I um, try to solve any problems that I may have in the future by having way too many connectors and different things because I'd rather depend on me rather than the people that I'm recording the audio from like the DJ um, so just try to be prepared as much as you can the more sources you have the better I can't tell you how many times my backup of my backup was the one that I had to use because everything else didn't work or got moved or they weren't talking there or it failed or the batteries uh, came out um, it's always good to have backups as far as powering all these devices double A is usually what they take and I use these end loop rechargeable double A's um, they're a little more expensive than what you typically think for batteries but it's great to know that you have everything powered up because but in between shoots I recharge them put fresh batteries in every single time and I've got about like 40 of them so I'm set um, they're wonderful so one thing that I found and I do every single wedding now is to have a separate recorder just picking up the ambient room for the ceremony and also for the reception the entire time so I just put one recorder somewhere and then just have it record at a, a certain level and then that, that way I can get audi audience applause I can get the ambience I can get whatever and I'm covered because I've found every so often even with my multiple audio sources that there'll be a gap every so often or just um, 
I'll want like music playing with the people as they're entering the church, but the only mics I have rolling are ones that are close to me and I'm moving my monopod around making noise or it's on another person and they're talking when I want like a nice clean audio source. So that'll do it for today's episode. Um, of course, everything I talked about is uh, in, in the description with links and prices if you want to check it out yourself. And I've also got a bunch of reviews of the pieces, individual pieces that I've talked about. Um, so check out the description below and of course give us a like if this helped out in any way. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Um, but until then, thank you for watching. See you.